sent out of the atmosphere. Like Timothy Leary's body maybe is floating out in space. And I don't know how many people have had their bodies sent out into space, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that he was one of them. So he, he understands. So God owns all the atoms, and he can reconstitute all the atoms, and he can create a body that's infinitely better in the sense that it's imperishable now. It can't die. It can't be threatened by anything. And that's a reality that's coming. That's called the resurrection of the dead, the judgment day. So those that, that are, are righteous, those that have died first in Christ, are going to be resurrected first, and they're going to be given the promise, eternal life in a paradise, because this earth is going to be a paradise. Okay, once God's will is firmly established upon the earth, and he is ruling our lives, okay, we're going to be free, and we're going to all be happy and at peace with one another and prosperous and content and secure and joyful and blissful and euphoric all the time. But that's a huge departure from where we are right now. Right now, we're still in, a th in the thick. Okay, we're in the midst of the storm, and there's, you know, is there hope in sight? I believe there is. I believe there's a glimmer of light at the end of the tunnel, and I believe things, people are starting to get empowered and demanding change. We've got to start asking questions. Tell the mainstream media, start asking questions. What's the solution to the problems? Point out to these homeless people, if they got desperate enough, they, 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 these are the ones that commit crimes and how much that costs the taxpayers. The mainstream media is not doing jack squat to educate the public. And what's the solution to litter? Well, I'll provide garbage cans, for God's sake. And if you don't want to poop it out and pee in and stuff in public, then you got to provide them with Johns. Duh. It's going to cost you one whole hell of a lot less than if they get so desperate they commit a crime and end up behind bars at 100000 100, a year. How much does it cost per, per head to give them garbage cans and latrines? If you're not willing to give them any housing, at least let them pitch a tent, for God's sake. I mean, it's inhumane. You're dehumanizing them. You're dehumanizing Christ, and you think God's wrath is not hanging heavy over America. Oh, my God, we're in so much freaking trouble, my friends. So you understand, that is the pretense, the pretext to why, when, once you figure out that it's true, we could all be rich and prosperous, and why they can't tolerate that, okay? Because we'll destroy the planet. But, remember, they're not going to bring up uh, clean technology, that is disruptive technology, right? We're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about the weather modification program that the information is widely available online to anybody. You can see it for yourself. It's all true. Been going on for decades. Chemtrailing, right? Spraying the skies. And the, the whole theory is that, well, the aluminum powder is going to reflect the sun back. And we're going to save the planet this way. That's what they're saying. I mean, we're breathing this crap. You know it causes brain damage? This is where a lot of people think the Alzheimer's thing comes from. There's aluminum deposits in the brain they find sometimes. Dementia, et cetera, et cetera. Horrible disease. This might be what's, it's like thermite. It's related. This is one of the prime ingredients of thermite, thermate. This very incendiary compound. The primary ingredient is aluminum powder. They're spraying that stuff. The pine needles up in paradise are saturated with this crap. You get one little spark, one little flame. Ba boom, everybody said it was so hot. I mean, it was melting cars and all stuff that you can't. How could a fire that get that hot? Yeah, you got to wonder. How could that happen? I'm just saying. Do you think they want the public to know? Do you hear the mainstream media talking about this? Like it's, yeah, of course, yesterday's news. Duh, of course, they've been doing this for decades. Anybody in the know knows it's. So why, you understand, you think I'm a conspiracy theorist? You think I'm wrong to be skeptical about this? You think I'm being overly cynical to say there's something wrong with this picture? We're being manipulated wildly, up one side, down the other to the nth degree, to nth degree, roundly manipulated by the stuff they don't talk about. They don't try to educate the public. They're supposed to be the cutting-edge educators of mainstream media. That's what information is. You go to college, you go to school. What are you getting? What is an education? It, you, yeah, it's information you're getting and you're taking and you're learning it. The information, the education, you're getting the education from the information you get. It's all the same thing. That's what the mainstream media's job is. They're utterly, profoundly, and deliberately remiss. Obviously, duh. But do you think these people that are doing this, that, that are in charge of this chem trailing program, the weather modification they've been doing, you think they want to be stuck holding the bag when, when it hits the fan? like it's hitting the fan in Australia and so many other places. 
You think they want to be blamed for that and be held accountable, held responsible? Could you imagine the lawsuits? Somebody's going to be out of business. Somebody's going to be homeless under the bridge. That's who. So you, what, you think it's not important that they keep the people stupid, ignorant, confused, dumbed down, that I'm some conspiracy nut talking about this stuff? That I'm conspiracy nut to say, hey, well, in all likelihood, it's kind of, you know, child's play to suggest the Federal Reserve somehow, somebody working in that entity murdered JFK. And the the reason, the motive, the incentive was clear. Quay Bono, who benefits? I mean, one day they were going to be out of business and the next day, hey, now, you know, uh, what, how many years later? We're talking uh, 60 years later, what, 1963, 30, uh, 57 years later? Uh, they put us in debt to over $24 trillion or some damn thing. Not a bad gig. And they're getting the productive class, that is the working class, the labor class, the blue-collar class, to pay that. And the way they're doing that is through currency dilution. You understand? It's In economic terms, it's called currency debasement. If you want to look up, it's the same thing. You understand? If you want to see, look at it like this, deworthment. Now, do you hear the mainstream media trying to explain these things to you and try to educate you and inform you and empower you like this? Explaining these things in, in you know, very succinct, clear, mathematical, logical terms that a child can understand this stuff. Do you hear them trying to do that? No. Why? We have to ask why. why? And even the reporters, aren't they? Can't they go out and they can tell her, I want to get this story. That's, so there's something going on. They report it. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be a good story. But I know you know, which side my bread is buttered. I don't want to rub my boss the wrong way. And I know the gun he's under, so I better just toe the line here and just be a good little reporter and just report on stuff that uh, I know my boss would approve of because I've got a very lucrative job, okay? I'm one of those, I'm one of those in the minority in California that can still afford to be a homeowner. I get paid enough to be middle class, so I've got to, uh, you know, Support the status quo of the establishment and the trajectory we're on toward ever increasing wealth imbalance and climate destruction. I mean, do they get a story from the recycling plant and say, why is it that you know, people can recycle less? Everybody wants to be ecological and they want to recycle all their stuff. They want everything biodegradable. I mean, why aren't we talking? Why isn't the recycling industry talking to the packaging companies? Why aren't they, you understand? Why isn't there more symbiotic relationships here going on and understanding of the public? And, and more attempts to make it easier and easier to recycle all our stuff. But they're saying you can't even put scraps of metal in. We don't want dirty containers. Oh, if a pizza box got a little oil and we can't use it. We all know they've got to recycle this stuff. Impurities are taken out of all this stuff once they melt it down. Hey, but it's too much work and it costs money and all this. So their solution is nothing, just silence. Oh, it just goes in the landfill. I mean, if you ever go to the dump, just do it out of your own curiosity. Go visit the dump. See what American people are dumping at the dump. You're going to feel like going grabbing some of yourself, stuff yourself, even if you're rich. You say, Wait a minute, they're throwing out good lumber there. What's going on here? You understand? There's just a ton of stuff. That's just, we're a very wasteful society. It's consumerism. And then we're told, well, you're bad. You're unecological if you consume. You understand? But, you know, the recycling, we're, we're not going to talk. We just won't talk about it. We're mad at China because they stopped taking our junk. We're stuck with it now. And it's costing us too much, and we're going to have to raise your prices. And it's always the only solution. More money, more money. I mean, the best thing they could do to end homelessness and to create affordable housing in America is to take away that $50 billion a year. I guarantee with what I know about real estate, and I was a licensed California real estate agent, I know my stuff. Okay, I probably got 100% on the exam. I can learn stuff very well. Okay, you'd see homelessness dry up overnight. You say, how could that be? When all the politicians and bureaucrats tell us is that the solution is more funding. That's the answer to everything, more money. We've got to raise your taxes. And problems get worse, like this gas tax in California. The roads have just started to really fall apart. Now they're just crumbling to pieces all over. If people want the potholes fixed in front of their houses, they stop having to listen to cars slam into it and people cussing, okay, they got to go out there, go buy their own bag of asphalt, buy the equipment they need, the packer and everything, and learn how to pack a pothole themselves. This is since the gas tax. 
And the answer is more funding? No. The answer is yanking that $50 billion a year tomorrow. He said, oh, my God, how mean, how anti-caring and unsocialistic could you be? How incompassionate. Do you know how many people would be homeless? No, they wouldn't. You'd see landlords scrambling, scrambling. Their prices would drop dramatically, 90% in some cases, to keep you in the house because that's the amount of the subsidy. If your rent is a couple grand somewhere in the city and you're on Section 8 housing, that's the part that they'll pick up forever. As long as you're on a minimum wage job, if that's what they say, all you can afford is one or $200, that's it. They'll pay it. So you bet. You bet those landlords, they know, oh, my God, the jig is up. The gig is up. Okay. The gravy train, it's, it's over, man. It's done. We're cooked. Gig is up. I mean, that's it. You'd see landlords going out of business right and left. You'd see property prices plummet. Oh, oh, values. How dare you say that's a good <laughs> Idiots. Hey, I don't care about high-end property. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the low-hanging fruit. The stuff that's coveted by some struggling young couple, okay? Fixer-uppers and whatnot. The low-end properties. That's the stuff I say hands off, but that's the first stuff these voracious, vulturistic investors go after. That's the stuff they want. They need to keep people under their thumb. They don't want you to be able to afford to get out from under renting. They want you to be a renter forever. That's their security, okay, that you're stuck in the, on that hamster wheel. And they're just going to keep raising your your cost, your rent, and telling you, well, you better go tell you, ask your boss for a raise. I don't know. Depend on the Labor Department to give you a cost of living adjustment. I mean, that's it. That's a, the false hope. They're, you're told. Seems the smartest people are those that get the hell off that hamster wheel that keeps getting harder and harder to turn. You know it can't end well. You know you're just gonna it's going to sap your strength. And the sooner you get off that damn thing, the better. What does that mean? I mean, you've got to work yourself as an individual to keep your cost of living down. I don't mind. If people got money to burn, they want to live extravagantly, that's fine. But when it comes to, you know, all more and more professional people can't afford to be homeowners in California, you know that you're at, you're not part of the solution. You're part of the problem. If you just say, well, I'm well healed, I'm, you know, well healed, you're renting, you're, you're a tenant. Okay, if you can't afford to be a homeowner, you're not. So if you're willing to pay, you say when the rent goes up, I'm I'm comfortable. I can afford that fifty dollar increase. Do you realize the effect that might have? We're we're by that fifty bucks is a straw that broke the camel's back for another tenant. Do you understand how we're all in this thing together? We're all stuck between a rock and a hard spot. Our welfare is inextricably interconnected. You must give a damn, or else you're outside of God's law, and you're going to be judged on that. Not caring about others. It's not me. It's not my family. Not my problem. You just we you know, slice off part of your conscience and just stand before God someday and say that was okay. And you think it's going to hold water. You think you're going to be found worthy and deserving. And when God says, well, you know what? You acted in a way you told your tenants. It, it was just business. I mean, just business, nothing personal. Well, maybe God's going to tell you the same thing. He's going to be just like you in his business. They say, well, where are you going to found worthy and deserving going to? Where do you go from here? You know, what's your reward? Or lack thereof. No, you're going to go with all these people. All these hypocrites and elitists. That think they're more important, more valuable than others. For whatever sick reason is in their, their sick mind. And it's not going to work. And the, the bullies of society are not going to be found worthy and deserving of living with the righteous. Those that want to live together in peace and harmony, safety, security, freedom and prosperity across the board. Everybody. With no exceptions to the rule, they want everybody included, like one big, fat, happy family. Do you want that? Ask yourself. And if you don't, then ask God. Otherwise, I'm saying you're you're making your own decision. You're deciding, okay, to not give a damn. That's a conscious decision. That's to not love. That's not to follow God's commandment. Jesus is to make commandment. Just those two commandments. His yoke is easy, his load is light. You've got to get it. you got to understand what's going on here. you got to give a damn. And if you don't, then you can expect the same thing on Judgment Day. Because you didn't create yourself. Nobody did. What do you know about making a brain or a person? If you got children, what did you do besides what came to you as a, like instinct? Like monkeys and dogs do or any other creature. They mate. That's what you did. Okay? God owns us. He owns everything. He's the creator. 
though. Be ready. I mean, I, this is a big deal. This is about eternal salvation. I don't want other people's metaphorical blood on my hands or head. If I don't warn people and I know better, then then I'm going to get blamed. See, I'm stuck too. That's why I'm passionate. I mean, this is serious stuff. I want to be happy for God's sake. And I can't be happy in a world where people all around me are suffering unnecessarily. It sucks. I don't like it. I don't want it. I object vociferously, and you should too. I'm doing the right 